So the, the poster is actually the person asked the question is Yuna Scott uh, on yeah. our Facebook page. Thank you, Yuna. Uh, she asked, what about Arambula dash Bravo? Yeah. You know, I'd have to, <laughs> I, I did discuss that last week, you know, as I'm sure, you know, the BIA decision, um, what, are, you know, I, I don't, I don't read Aaron Bula Bravo as, as mattering for this. Um, Aaron Bula Bravo said that it's, first of all, I think Aaron Bula Bravo is mostly about parole and whether or not an efficient NTA terminates parole. And so it doesn't have anything to do with in absentia motions to reopen or um, necessarily dismissal of proceedings, but they start off their decision, the board, by saying a deficient NTA is not jurisdictional. All right, fine. Every, honestly, everybody agrees to that. There isn't a circuit I'm aware of that has not held that. It's That that issue was kind of dead. But even in Aaron Bula Bravo, they footnote and say, we've already said in matter of Rosales Rosales that a deficient NTA is a violation of a mandatory claims processing rule and while the board didn't say it, a violation of a mandatory claims processing rule could lead to dismissal of proceedings. So I don't read matter of Aaron Bula Bravo as really saying much in regards to whether or not proceedings must be dismissed or not. They didn't reach the claims processing argument because it wasn't made to the IJ below. I can see John's just eyes glazing over right now, but <laughs> but they didn't they didn't reach it because of that reason. And so if it's a mandatory claims processing rule violation, proceedings could get dismissed if you can show that there was prejudice or based on that Seventh Circuit decision a couple of months ago where I got in trouble, which the name escapes me right now. The Seventh Circuit seemed to indicate that if it's deficient, you dismiss. Now, if, if timely raised, at least. So definitely raise it going forward. Either way, I don't believe Aaron Bula Bravo really says anything. And certainly not about motions to reopen in absentia. Um, Perfect. so, but hey, hey, look, those motions to reopen, Rodriguez v. Garland just blew it up. Um, no matter if you're in the fifth circuit or not, you have a strong argument. Yeah. And so, how many deficient NTAs led to in absentia motions to reopen? It's gonna be thousands. Yeah. And that can be the difference between adjusting or not, right? When you, or at least getting consular process, um, with a 601A waiver. Yeah. If you can get rid of your in absentia motion to reopen. That's incredible. I mean, thousands, probably thousands and thousands. I mean, that, that's whole been the whole procedure uh, for the last many years where they send these deficient notices, the standard operating procedure, hasn't it? Um, where it's constantly coming out. 